Hi guys, I'm Hannah and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things spooky. And it's finally spooky season guys, which means that I'm posting my spooky season uploads, which means instead of uploading two to three times a month, I'll be uploading two to three times a week. Make sure that you're keeping up to date with all of my newest videos. Today's video, we are actually talking about my favorite supernatural creature, which is the Wendigo. It's my favorite monster to talk about because it's just scary, but I would never ever want to encounter one in the wild, which is actually what we are talking about today. I'm going to be reading about somebody's encounter with a Wendigo. If you want to know more about what a Wendigo is, you should go watch my video, link in the description. That's all about the Wendigo, and I actually posted that on my vlog channel whenever I didn't have a paranormal channel. So I will have that in the link below. But anyways guys, let's get into this video. I'm actually using my brother's phone today to read to you these stories because I'm filming with my phone and I found this story because I wanted to look for what claims to be true Wendigo encounters. So this one is on the Darkness Prevails website darkstories.org. It's by Lamar, Lamar Warren and I'm sorry if I <laughs> ruined that name. One thing that I do want to say is that the story isn't like professional or anything so there is a little grammar mistakes and it's not the best wording but I think it makes it more believable as a true story. So let's get into it. All credit goes to Lamar. This isn't my story, this is his. So this was posted on August 13th. And this is his quick little backstory before he gets into it. Also, I wanted to say real quickly that there is some cursing in this story and I'm not going to be reading the curse word. I'm just going to replace that word with a beep every time I read that because this is a no cursing zone allowed. As was stated in my username, my name is Lamar. I'm currently 15 and live in the state of Oregon. And what I'm about to share with you is 100% real. You have the choice of not believing me. I guess I could add you to the list. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. My first encounter with the Wendigo happened when I was 13. I was on a hunting trip with my grandpa Wayne. He's a retired army vet. The reason I'm telling you this will come later. We were out hunting rabbits and hares because I thought the only way to become a man was to go out and hunt something. And also my mom forced me to do it. She's said I was too much of a shut-in sitting on my beep beep xbox too much and I ended up getting a lecture about how when she was my age she'd be outside yada yada yada. So as soon as my grandpa had brought it up she jumped at the opportunity to get me out of the house. To be honest it was quite fun except for the not showering for a week. We were winding down for our last night there only being able to snack three rabbits mainly because I'm a beep shot. The sun was, start was starting to set and we decided to hit the hay in our all too big and expensive tent, made for six, even though I was only 5'10 at the time. And he's 5'11, but I guess he needed his space. It was around 2 a.m. I only know this because I had snuck my phone out when my mom wasn't looking. When we started noticing strange noises like something heavy stomping around our campground. But then we noticed a horrid smell like rotted meat and a dead skunk. We thought maybe it was the rabbit, but my grandpa told me there was no way that that was the rabbit's. The smell was too strong. It took everything in our power not to start gagging, and for me, it takes a lot to make me gag. I'm a teenage boy with two dogs. The smell even made my eyes start to water. My grandpa had also reminded me the rabbits were outside. So the thought had popped into my head that the noises could be a bear. But my grandfather shut that thought down fast. Then he said there is no way that that's a bear. I almost peed myself. 
I'm no hunting expert, but I'm pretty sure no other animal could be that big. My grandpa told me to stay put while he checked while he checked it out. He looked outside of our tent's window and then I saw his eyes bulge with what looked like fear. As if he could read my mind, he put his hand over my mouth to shush me. I had then gotten frustrated with him and moved his hand off my face and asked him what's going on. He then looked at me with fake calmness and said, grandson, that's no bear. I got tired of hearing that and went to go see what he had seen. I lift the flap of, of the tent window and look out and I even laughed a bit as when I looked in the direction of where he was looking, all I see is a pair of antlers sticking out of the bushes. I even attempted to put it on Snapchat to show everyone how bad my grandpa is with jokes. But my phone dies, which keeps me off because I have nothing to keep me entertained for the car ride back to Portland, all the way from Eastern Oregon. I was cursing myself for not turning it off during the trip to conserve power. But while I'm doing that, the thing I thought was some sort of buck or elk started to rise up. Then I got a good look at the face I was carrying those antlers. The first thing I saw was those cold, dead, hungry red eyes. Then the whole face. Dear God, I wish I hadn't. It was a skull-like face, like some sort of canine. It had black matted fur that threatened to fall off with the slightest touch. Then it rose higher. Then I saw the rest of it long slender arms with claws on each of, each of its hands bones that threatened to tear its skin with the slightest wrong movement then i noticed the teeth that could tear flesh from anything it wanted to i was so scared i had even started crying my grandpa pulled me down and kept asking me over and over did it see you and my grandfather told me that the only thing i could say was one to go. He said I was in a trance-like state. He tried to get me to snap out of it, but he couldn't. But one thing that got me to snap out of it was the in inhuman screech. What I had heard, it's nothing like what people say it's like. Imagine an eagle screech, but its screech would make its throat start to rip and tear and then mix it with a man screaming in agony. That's the sound you would get. Then we heard it leave the bush and enter our camp. It then let out another screech, which made me cover my head and fall to the ground crying. My grandpa wasn't able to get as good of a view as I had. So he silently zipped down the tent and peeked outside. And when he did, he immediately zipped it back up. My grandpa came back with the most terrified look on his face, which terrified me even more because my grandpa had watched his best friend get murdered. Seen people burned alive after they were hit with the palm. He's 200 pounds of muscle, and to see that fear in his face was scary. We then remembered we had left our rabbits right by our tent. Then we heard it coming our way. I could see the shape of it, and this thing was most likely three feet taller than us. And then I heard it start to crunch and tear the rabbits apart outside, which makes me think, what will it do if it finds us? It crunched loudly, which made me whimper which caused the creature to raise its head and let out another deafening screech, which at that point I couldn't take it anymore and broke down crying for my mother. The creature then started circling the tent and would sometimes flinch at us. The thing was playing with us, which made me beep. The thing was playing with us like we were toys. It enjoyed our suffering. It could easily cut through our tent and get to us. But what were we going to do with our metal BBs and measly hunting knife? We went hunting and now we've become the hunted. What came next will stay with me for the remainder of my life. It had cut through her tent and had put its head inside. My grandpa immediately went into protective mode and put me behind him. I was too much of a coward to look into the face of death. But my grandfather had the heart of a lion in that moment, knife in hand, ready to fight. All I could do was cry into his back and he then made a ballsy move and took his eye off the monster in front of us to tell me he's sorry and that he loves me. I looked at him and then went back to crying and told him in between breaths that I loved him too. The creature seemed annoyed at that point and attempted to get its hands through, 
When it did, my grandfather let out a yell and stabbed its hand, which made the creature rear back in pain and let out yet another screech. The creature was beyond beep at the, this time and was about to go in for another round. But the stun had started to rise and the creature had slowly backed away, headed back into the brush, but then turned around and looked through the hole it had created. And I swear it smiled at us as if to say this isn't over and retreated back into the forest. I was too stunned to move. But my grandpa had spun into action, leaving over a thousand dollars of gear and pulled me away to our car. He didn't even put on his seatbelt as he floored it out, out of there. We didn't start talking until we were on the freeway back home and he asked me in a calm voice if I knew what that thing was. To which he then stated all he could get me to say was Wendigo. I replied those were the only words that came to my mind. Me and my grandpa talk about it from this from time to time, and I started doing research on what a, the creature could be. The only thing that matched my description was Wendigo. I know this was only one encounter this whole time. I'm at work at the moment and don't have the time to do it. As I said, this encounter was 100% real. Feel free to believe what you'd like. I'll be submitting the other story on Thursday if you'd like to hear it. Thank you for listening. It feels good to finally tell others that might believe me. So the story does say that there's two encounters and he said that he would post the second one later, but I couldn't find his second story. So I am just going to be sharing his first one. I hope that you still enjoyed that video. Let me know down below if you think that this really happened or if he's just making this up. A lot of the things did match the description of a Wendigo. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Martha Dump Truck in the flesh, here comes the Cooley Squad. Shut up, Heather. Sorry, Heather. Look who's with her. Oh my god. Ding 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 Talking about an encounter. We are I'm going to be reading Which made me antlers.